my a, a friend of mine, her mom told me when her kids were, I don't know, maybe in their 20s or something, she said, you know, my prayer for my, my girls, and they were grown, is that they'll lay their head on the pillow at night and just have peace. And I thought that is the most beautiful image of just kind of God holding us in his arms going, just rest, just rest. You don't have to prove anything to me. You just heard the voice of Reverend Karen Kraska, one of the associate pastors at Treach Memorial United Methodist Church. Thanks for listening to the Life Plus God podcast. My name is Alyssa Robinson. I'm your host. And you caught a little glimpse of the question today, how can I find purpose in life? You know, one of the the lighter questions, (laughs) the easier ones. Um, You know, I've been thinking a lot about purpose lately and the amount of pressure that we are put on in this society to make sure that our life has purpose, our life has meaning. And I want to explore what does that mean for us spiritually? And is it possible that we're maybe misunderstanding what finding purpose and meaning in life is? So I I hope that this is a good light conversation today. And I say light, not because it's a light topic, but because I know we're going to barely scratch the surface of finding purpose and meaning. And once again, Karen chose this topic. So that's right. (laughs) Sounded fun. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this conversation and uh, helping us find purpose or maybe what finding purpose means. Um, To get started, I just want to hear your opinion in general. Why do you think as humans, we find the need to search for purpose and meaning out of life? That is a really good question, Alyssa. And I would say we're created by God. And as we go through our lives, what it's kind of like, what is the meaning of life? Why are we here? How did we get here? What are we supposed to do now that we are here? So um, perhaps it's a more rhetorical question. (laughs) But I believe that, um, like Rick Warren says in The Purpose Driven Life, you know, when I chose this topic, I kept thinking, golly, I loved that study. We did an all-church study. It's been many years ago. I was still in high school when we did that. I was going to say, it was a long (laughs) time ago, uh, like 20 years ago. I I was kind of um, newly married, and we hosted a group in our home. And I loved it so much because the first sentence of this book, The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, is, it's not about you. And that has stuck with me low these many years that I believe that we all have purpose, but our purpose is so beyond ourselves. Mm. So that makes me wonder if one of the pitfalls of finding purpose is centering ourselves and making it about like, what is my role in the world? Mm-hmm. What am what it, what is supposed to give me personally meaning? Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, when we center, so if we're not centering ourselves and it's not about me, what is finding purpose about? I think purpose um, can can kind of change throughout our lives. This morning I had life group and I threw this question out to my life group. I thought, hey, I've got a nice, you know, captive audience of about eight uh, women. And I said, hey, on my turn, I have a question to pose to each of you. And I just asked, how do you find purpose in, in life? And it, it was fascinating and thing, you know, how different people share different things. And uh, one woman said, you know, I think your purpose in life changes with various ages and stages. And I agree with that wholeheartedly. I don't believe we have like one destiny, one purpose. We're here to find that kernel. And if we don't find it, then our life was for, for nothing. I don't believe that at all. I believe that we have purpose in in our, our living and our loving, in our family, with our friends, with our careers, with our neighbors. We can have purpose uh, at different stages and ages of our lives. What? So can you walk me through your journey of purpose and some of those stages that you've experienced? Well, sure. I think um, foundationally, you know, being a, I was a, a daughter and a sister to my brother. I've shared with you before kind of a, a pivotal point in my life was when I lost um, one of my best friends at 17. And that kind of threw me into this faith 
uh, exploration of where is God in this and how does God work in this, you know, tragedy and trauma and really sent me on a quest uh, for God and a relationship with God, kind of questioning everything. Uh, I think that was one one stage uh, of my life. And I think the purpose, you know, my purpose there is to love my family, to be a good student. I believe overarching to try to be um, a light for Christ and a disciple. Even as a child, I very much felt connected, like God expected something of me. Uh, Maybe I was a a weird kid, but I always felt like God gave me this life and expects me to do something with it. Mm. Uh, I don't know if that came from guilt or I don't know where, but I just always felt like, wow, I'm going to let God down if I don't do this. So I would bargain a lot with God. Well, that's what I, when I was kind of noodling on this idea, preparing for this episode, like the idea of finding purpose in life feels like so much pressure Mm -hmm. and so intimidating. And obviously like I am biased having grown up in America with a specific mindset. And when I think of finding purpose, I think of, it means you need to be ambitious. It means you need to be setting goals. You need to have a five-year plan. You need to, you know, and there's this checklist of things for you to make sure. And I I kept uh, this phrase of living up to your potential, which I'm like, Really? Like, is that what it is to be purposeful and meaningful in life is like you have to. And it goes back to this American mentality of what's your output? What is your impact? What are you providing to the world? And I, I don't think that that's the kind of purpose that you're talking about. I don't think that that's the purpose that God has for us. I believe God's purpose for us is that we love and follow and serve and worship God. But I do believe, to your point, we're indoctrinated from the time we're little. What do you want to be with you when you Mm -hmm. grow up? Where are you going to go to school? What are your hobbies? What are your interests? So when passion can intersect with with a purpose, you know, I kind of, I kind of, um, reject that we have one purpose other than to glorify God. I feel very comfortable saying my purpose here is to worship and to glorify God and to be the best, you know, Christian example I can be, uh, which I fall way short. I'm pretty clear on that. It's the other peripheral stuff and it's what the world tells us. And hey, as a mom, I I am so guilty of, you know, what are you going to do? And you got to be self-sufficient. You need to be good, good education. You need to make good grades. You need to, you need to, you need to. Mm -hmm. And it can be very um, intimidating and daunting. I know in high school, all my kids had to pick a track, you know, are you going to go fine arts? Are you going to go science, arts and science, you know? Oh my gosh, you're 14. I'm 14. <laughs> you're 14. How do you know what you're going to be? Yeah. And it does feel like a lot of pressure. And I believe you're exactly correct. It's kind of daunting. Like, am I have no purpose if I, you know, don't become a doctor or a lawyer, you know, or something that society says has a lot of value? But we can be purposeful and live a life of purpose no matter what we choose vocationally or if we don't choose a vocation and choose to stay home or whatever. I believe God can work, um, work in us and through us. Well, and, and I wonder if there is a difference between having purpose and finding meaning, because I, I wonder if we kind of conflate those as uh, the same thing when they're actually two different things, because it makes a lot of sense to me from a spiritual perspective of finding purpose. Like Mm -hmm. I do believe that my purpose is to be a source of love and light in this world and just do the best I can every day to share Christ's love in the best way I can. And that's an amazing purpose. Um, Is that also where I am supposed to find meaning? And I, and I'm asking, Asking this from a very unique perspective of this is a a topic that I personally have wrestled with because a lot of the areas in people's lives where they find meaning is in their career, yes, or uh, in their marriage 
or in their children. Right. And I've opted out of two out of three right. of those. Right. And also, it, it, for me, I have a very uh, hard boundary that I don't want my work to be my life. I don't want my work to be my source of meaning. And so where it, do you think there is a difference between purpose and meaning or that they... How do, how do you find, wow. I'm rambling now. Yes, how no. do you find meaning? No, Karen? that's interesting because we had a similar, it was a much shorter conversation this morning in our life group, purpose, passion, and meaning. And we're going to talk about the meaning of life. Wow. That's, that's, that's pretty heavy. And I couldn't even begin, begin to say that I have that much uh, wisdom or knowledge or insight, but I believe purpose and passion does give meaning. Uh, and I believe that God has gifted all of us. If we can tap into our passion and find purpose, then we have meaning. But are they the same? No, I don't think they're really the same. Um, but they are very, very close and probably intertwined. Mm. So what is your passion that like and how does it give you meaning? I think my, well, I'll start with my gifts. Okay. I've always loved music. I've always loved music. And now we're going to get into kind of career stuff. But as a kid, you know, what am I going to do? What am I, I've always liked singing and performing and being creative. And I feel like God gifted me, gave me passion in the arts. And then that has translated into a career. Now, whether I got paid for what I'm you know, doing, or uh, I'm blessed that my kind of passion has intersected, but I always felt like that God was leading me. And I've always prayed for God to, you know, intercede and give me wisdom and kind of guide my steps, so to speak, that I would be in the place God wants me to be. Now, I've done other things um, work-wise throughout, throughout my life, but I do feel like I've been really, really blessed to find meaning in my work. Now, I also believe that people who work desk jobs or, or, or jobs that you would think, wow, who have the ability to, to speak life into someone, coworkers or, or friends, I don't believe you have to work for the church or a religious <laughs> institution to have a career of meaning. Same thing, a life of meaning. Um, we talked about this this morning too. You know, those who are in nursing homes or hospitals or elderly or have physical disabilities. I think the Martha, you know, Mary story in the Bible is a good reminder that we are more than human beings just doing things, human doing, that we have meaning and purpose when we just settle ourselves and connect with God mm -hmm. and to your point where we kind of center ourselves, we have to have a cup that's full before we can pour into yeah. others. And so it does take intentionality into our own spiritual life. Well, it, it's funny because I asked my partner like, hey, you know, where do you find purpose and meaning? And he, he finds purpose in his job, but he's like, meaning is me. Like my mm -hmm. being is my meaning. Like I am meaningful as a human. And I was like, that's true. That is <laughs> like true. I wish yeah. that I didn't feel the need to be on this constant quest right. for finding what is my purpose? What is my passion? What is my meaning? And like, it feels like you're on a deadline, you know, mm -hmm. um, until you know, the day we die. <laughs> but right. <laughs> right. And I, I struggle with just kind of being and you know, like the meaning of life. And you think about, you know, if you're uh, meditating and allowing God to kind of fill those spaces. Um, yeah, we're, we're enough. We're mm -hmm. enough just because we're created and loved by God. And that gives us meaning and purpose. Yeah. Well, if someone is trying to explore their passion or their purpose or something, you know, they're trying to get on that path. In your experience, what do you see as some common obstacles or challenges for people when they're trying to explore that area? Hmm. I think that maybe lack of, of confidence or knowing where to start. Um, and I would just encourage start somewhere 
one of the ladies this morning was sharing how she found a lot of purpose in being a volunteer with CASA and others teaching confirmation. And so everybody kind of had their this is how, but it was all kind of service oriented, which harkens back to we're here not just for ourselves. And so many of those women around the table found purpose and meaning in serving others. You know, maybe it's your, your, uh, family, your nuclear family, and then it can translate to co-workers, neighbors, and pouring into whatever social services or um, where you feel like you can kind of give back. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage those who are trying to find passion or purpose to find um, a holy discontent if it's hungry people or homelessness or um, whatever if there is something that causes you a holy discontent, like this kind of bothers me, it could be politics, it could be anything that you think, I think I could make a difference or I want to help make this better, that can give purpose and mm-hmm. and, and, and in, increased meaning in your life. Yeah, I I think one of the hardest obstacles for me is just time. Mm. Of like, I am not one of the lucky people that, you know, my passion intersects with my career. I'm Mm. good at my job. I enjoy my job. I like what I do, but I wouldn't say it gives me purpose in life. And so when I'm wanting to explore passions, you know, I'm, I'm working, I've got, you know, I'm in the uh, the car probably an hour and a half to two hours every day because I've got a long commute. Mm. When I get home, I'm tired. On the weekends, I want to rest, you know? And so it's hard to find the motivation to want to do more and explore something new when I'm so tired. But it it actually makes me start thinking of like one of the things that I'm passionate about is rest Mm -hmm. (laughs) and encouraging others to rest. It's okay to take a break. It's okay to say no to things. It's okay to set boundaries. And that's something that I'm very passionate about is being a cheerleader for others Mm -hmm. to take your rest take your time. And, um, I wonder if there's like a I ministry a great around purpose. that or something. Yeah, Sure. Because I am very much a Martha. So it's hard for me to resonate with a Mary, like mm-hmm. in scripture that, you know, was sitting at Jesus feet while Martha was preparing the meal because I'm the meal preparer. So I have to be really intentional about those quiet times, those still times. So someone like you that encourages me to, Hey, you don't have to do everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really not all about you and your to-do list, as Dan likes to say, you know, hey, you cross things off your to-do list. I just feel victorious. Um, and I, and to your point, when I've gone overseas and seen like monasteries, and I think, wow, monks who have devout, devoted their lives to God, oh my gosh. who are aesthetics, I'm like, how, you know. It sounds like a dream to me. <laughs> like, See, I can't even imagine, but I think their gift to the world, prayer, yeah. prayer. Wow. So we don't have to be constantly doing things. They literally, I've been in monasteries where they are silent, where they pray, where they fast. And I think I cannot even imagine, but I'm grateful. Sometimes I just think, I wonder who's praying for our country, our world, me specifically right now. Yeah. Well, see, I, I have day, I daydream about, and I, maybe it's because my, um, career is I have to be connected. I, you know, my job is being on social media, uh, being online, having my cell phone on me at all times, you know, all that stuff. And so I daydream about just getting rid of all technology Mm. and going and living in the woods and having no TV, no nothing, like no way to contact the world. And it sounds so peaceful. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, that's wonderful. Except I love my family and my friends too much to like become a recluse. But I'm like, oh man, that sounds so wonderful. (laughs) And I think that would, oddly enough, give me a purpose of like just, just handle what's happening in front of you directly every day and be present in the moment 
every day. Because I think that another one of those obstacles is to finding purpose and passion. We have too many options. Absolutely. Like, there is so much going on in the mm-hmm. world that you could potentially mm-hmm. be passionate about Absolutely. and could put that holy unrest Absolutely. in you. And yes. I think that we have this mentality of like, yeah, this is good, but what if something there's something better out right. there? What if there's something that inspires me even more? And we don't want to feel... Uh, trapped or settled or complacent. You know, we want to be constantly moving on to what's next. And feeling like we're doing something to make a difference, but you know, not to try to be a therapist here, but to your point, if you're feeling frazzled and you need that rest, take the rest because you know what you need. Sometimes, you know, like introvert, extrovert, sometimes you get life from people and activities and sometimes it's depleting. Mm -hmm. And there are phases and stages and where you are now as a young professional with a long commute is probably not where you will be in, you know, several years. And so I really believe like in Ecclesiastes for everything, there's a season, even meaning and purpose I think can shift, it can change. And for us to not be um, so consumed with, I have to discover this, Mm -hmm. I have to figure this out, but that it's a journey and it's a give and a take and a push and a pull and an exploration. You know, I find a lot of comfort and solace in nature, in the earth and working in the garden. And so I think there's meaning just in the creation, in God's creation, and I'm a part of that um, without looking for kind of outside validation because mm-hmm. I'm performing or doing to a certain level or degree. Well, and I think that that's a really healthy reminder for us to not get caught up in individualism mm. of like, what am I, like, what am yes. I getting out of this? What am I contributing? And what is my impact? And what I'm hearing from you is like, I just like to go out and touch the dirt and remember mm-hmm. I'm part of something so much bigger than so myself. So much bigger. Like mm-hmm. what a privilege and joy to get to participate yes. in this world. Yeah, I think we live in such a consumeristic, self-centered society. Mm -hmm. It's all about me. It's all about, you know, you deserve this. I need this. And it's easy to get caught up in that, myself included, for sure. And so it really is centering to realize we are a speck in a huge beautiful, wonderful tapestry, Mm -hmm. a puzzle of God's amazing love and creation. And it's humbling and it's centering to realize I'm enough because God created me. Mm. Is there anything, so I know that, um, you, you are one of the fortunate ones where your passion intersects with your vocation. Uh, but I'm sure that you've also experienced seasons of passion and purpose. Can you walk us through maybe like a couple examples of how you felt your personal purpose has changed over time or even maybe your attitude towards it has changed over time? That's a good question. Um, I think about kind of my younger self when I was doing secular music, singing in bands, working in theme parks, cruise ships, those kinds of things. I always felt that, you know, this kind of God draw. And like I said, I used to kind of bargain with God. If you'll do this for me, I'll do this for you. If you'll, you know, (laughs) if you'll reveal this, then I, I promise I'll serve you all, whatever. And so even as a younger person, I remember I got involved in Big Brothers, Big Sisters. When I worked at Opryland Entertainment, I started a Performers for Christ group. I just always felt like God was wanted more for me. Like, well, if you'll let, give me some success here or some validation here, then I promise I won't turn my back. So I think maybe, I don't know if that's typical or not. I always felt like if you give me this, I'll give you this, which is really a very immature faith. It, it is, but I, I own that. So I wasn't always in, you know, Christian music, Christian, you know, vocation, but I see so many people in their lives, whether they work or not, that find ways to connect to God and that that bring them richness and purpose and meaning in their life, not just by, you know, working in the CCA food pantry, Christian Community Action, that's the acronym, um, or, or those things like I am doing this, but 
sending notes of cards of encouragement or praying or genuinely caring teachers, I mean, nurses, oh my gosh, healthcare professionals. There are some vocations where you just, it's just oozing with care and concern for the other, those who are in environmental or just keeping, you know, things functioning in a business or a corporation. Um, Yeah, there's all kinds of ways. I I just, in my life, because I I got into ministry actually late in my 20s, I'm I'm not saying that I had so much experience in the secular world, but I do believe that um, God has kind of directed my path, so to speak, and I have been fortunate that my vocation has, has intersected, I think, with my meaning and purpose. But if I had chosen to, you know, work in an office or something like that, my goodness, I could have... I could give testimony to so many that I have worked with who really feel I'm going to do the best I can. I mean, to do our work, you know, to the best we can as if we were doing it for God, because in some ways we're, like I said, we're all like a machine and and God uses the analogy of the parts of the body. We can't all be heads. We can't all be hands. We can't all be feet. But when we all come together and, and bring our best, um, I believe that we can, you know, it's important to the body of Christ. What are some of the, you know, in your ministry, some of the unique gifts that you've seen from people that it has been very clear to you, oh, they have a unique purpose and a unique gift that I don't have. And just being able to see that um, purpose-driven life unfold. Mm. Well, I I know of myself, I'm not very intuitive. I kind of lumber through life and I I don't mean to be insensitive, but I don't necessarily think of the consequences of, um, you know, maybe something I've planned or whatever, how it affects others and the bigger picture, so to speak. And so, um, I know that about myself. And so I try to seek out people that I work with that have gifts and uh, graces that I don't have. I think that's one of the lovely things about the body of Christ. And when we have committees or organizations, it's important to not just stack them with people who think and look and the same age and the same education as we agree with you. Exactly. That's the, As much as that would be more simple, Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's really not the picture, I think, of heaven, (laughs) Mm -hmm. that we all have something to contribute, even those who vehemently disagree or see things from a different perspective. Um, I think that that adds richness. I don't know that really answered your question. Well, it does, because I I wasn't really telling you the path I was going down there. But (laughs) what what I'm trying to understand is... Um, as we're talking about migrating away from individualism, it mm. feels like the spiritual understanding of purpose is more communal. I absolutely believe and, that. And for us to understand that communal means embracing our differences, embracing yes. different perspectives and understandings. Yes. And that will help us. Like I'm trying to figure out how that connects to communal purpose. I think it's the first and the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And if we just, if we just, that that is to me what it's really all about. That Mm -hmm. is our purpose, to love God and love others. It's really that simple. And when we do that, I really truly believe our lives have meaning. What does loving God look like for you? Um, Well, for me, I I believe the spiritual disciplines help me love God better because to to know God, I I love the people I know the best. Um, I'm, I'm when I have an intimate relationship with friends, with family, with coworkers, when I know people, just like I know God, there's communication, there's commitment, and the spiritual disciplines help me know God better. Scripture reading, Bible study, prayer, fasting, holy communion, those spiritual disciplines help me connect to God and have a more intimate relationship with God. Yeah. I think sometimes I, I don't know if this is on the purpose track or not. This is very broad, but I struggle with the concept of what it is to love God Mm. because 
I understand what it is to love other people Mm -hmm. and to care for other Mm -hmm. people, but God is not a human being. Right. God is not a, an entity. Right. And so I'm like, man, how do I, and so I had this, this idea of like, okay, well, the way that I love God is by loving people because Mm -hmm. people are made in the image of God, but it just, it feels so amorphous to me of like, how do I actually, and even the spiritual practices, the spiritual disciplines, those feels like, you know, a checklist of things to do to try to get closer to God. Mm -hmm. But does that lead you to love God? Like, Wow. What a good question. <laughs> I, I remember having a conversation. I'm, I want my purpose to be yeah. to love God. I hear but you. I want to know what that what means. What that means exactly. Yeah. And I'll just say, since I work for the church and it's it's easy to kind of blur the lines, like I'm doing all this for God because I'm doing it for work. So I've had to kind of call myself to accountability on some of that. Like, oh, I can, you know, make all kinds of excuses why I'm not home, you know, especially early in my ministry when I'd be at the church three and four nights a week and probably neglecting other things I should have paid attention to because, oh, I'm doing it for God. I'm doing it for God while I was doing it for work, which I just happened to work for the church, which, you know. It, so it really uh, it, enables workaholic It, it really does. It really like, does. No, I'm, I'm building the kingdom of heaven. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. But your question reminded me years ago of um, someone that I was close to who was considered himself an agnostic. And we were talking about something and I said, well, whatever God, I, I don't know, something about the, what God expected of me or of him. And he goes, God expects nothing of me. Whoo, it just kind of blew me back. And it really caused me to think, what does God expect of me? And it kind of ties into that whole purpose of, like you said, how do I love God better? Because to his, you know, where he was spiritually, he didn't think God expected, needed his love or affection or whatever. Um, I believe to love God is to honor God with our lives. I mean, if our body is a temple, we take care of our bodies. If we're to love others as, you know, um, as God loves us, then, then we love unconditionally. We love radically. We love with abandonment. I think all of that honors God. But to your point, it is, I mean, you could kind of I like speech and debate. I did in high school. I, you know, you, you could take positions on both sides, go, huh, and argue over here and argue over here. But I really believe loving God means we love our neighbors and we love ourselves mm-hmm. because we're created in God's image. And we forgive ourselves when we fail and we confess and we move forward and we're hopefully you know, we exhibit the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Those things, I think, honor God. Mm. Has there ever been a time in your life that you felt like you lost your sense of purpose? Mm. You felt a little uh, like you were flailing in the wind? <laughs> um, it sound, It's going to sound, you know... I hate to say no. I never felt like I've never felt like I had no reason to be here. Like I have no purpose. Now I will tell you as I kind of, you know, I've been in ministry for quite a while and thinking about what my next steps will be when someday I retire. Wow. That's just now kind of starting to sink in that. What will I do when I am no longer? And I'm not saying I'm doing it anytime, you know, in the next few days, weeks, months, the next few days, who knows, <laughs> who knows, God Thanks knows. Thanks for giving us warning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but as you kind of, you know, dream about what might this look like and what might I do, then I think, wow, my purpose really is wrapped up in my, in my job. It is. And my kids and my, I've got one more in high school. And then I'm like, wow. So, you know, thinking about what the next chapter will be when I don't have a kid at home, when, you know, someday I retire, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I I really realize how I have kind of bought into that. Oh, I'm so busy. And it's almost like a, I want to say a brag, but a lot of times I'll be with, I remember this years ago, um, I was out on the upward sports field and there was a lady there and she, it was like, she was bragging on how oh, we haven't been home one night this week and da, 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 da. And I just looked at her and I said, wow. I said, is that 
really great for your kids and your that family. Yeah, I know. I yeah. didn't want to just, you know, scold her, yeah. but it was like it was like she was boasting because mm-hmm. all of her kids were in, you know, 14 things and I just thought, yikes. That that's too much. Her identity was in this, you know, super mom taxi thing, but I'm just as bad yeah. because so much of my identity is wrapped up in oh, I've got this, you know, meeting or retreat yeah. or conference or Well, I think that's part of the American mindset is yes. the busier we are, the more important we feel Mm -hmm. or the more money we make well not all of us but (laughs) yeah but for a lot for a lot of people for a lot the status like the the, harder i push yeah the you know Mm -hmm. having uh side hustles and all of these things going on and uh yeah and for me i i decided a long time ago i'm willing to make less money to have peace you know like that is not something that i'm interested in i you know my partner jokes with me that i don't want to do like on do not plan (laughs) anything on a weeknight when i get home from work i'm done done. i'm done like we're not gonna have a full schedule well my best friends are the exact opposite it. Like when we want to hang out with them, we have to schedule at least a month in advance because they got something every, every single night. night and they love it. Yeah. Like they, right. lo- and it's because they're so connectional. They're so extroverted. Mm-hmm. Their energy comes from being around yes. other people. Mine too. And I'm the exact opposite. <laughs> I am introverted. Yeah. And um, my, I, I'm like, I need 10 hours of silence before I can be around another human yeah. being, you know? Yeah. And we're all so different. You know, you're talking about that, you know, that kind of peace. And my, a a friend of mine, her mom told me when her kids were, I don't know, maybe in their twenties or something, she said, you know, my prayer for my, my girls and they were grown is that they'll lay their head on the pillow at night and just have peace. Mm -hmm. And I thought that is the most beautiful image of just kind of God holding us in his arms going, just rest, just rest. You don't have to prove anything to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that kind of goes back to the mentality of God doesn't expect anything from you. I know. I can and go w- round and round. Yeah, I've, I circ- I've, I've circled that so many times. But then I think, well, then what am I, what am I creating? But that's, I, yeah. I would agree that God doesn't need our love and adoration. God does not expect, d- does not put pressure on us. I think that God loves us for who we are, where we are. And if we can tap into that feeling, I, you know, I was, I was trying to figure out what is my purpose, uh, because I don't find purpose in my job. I don't, I'm not married. I don't find purpose. I don't have kids. I don't want kids, you know? Um, and I was thinking, what is my life centered around? And for me, it came to seeking contentment mm. of like just being in gratitude for everything that I have. And that is a never ending journey right. because there are so many days that I get, uh, you know, worked up of like, oh, well, if they only paid me more or right. if I, right. you know, if these other people just don't understand what's going on, or if I only had a shorter commute and if right. I like these people are being idiots or whatever it is, I get this narrative in my head and I have to remind myself, like I have a roof over my head. Right. I can feed myself. Mm-hmm. I have a beautiful connection with my family. Mm-hmm. I have supportive friends. I have a wonderful partner. Like yes. I'm so counting fortunate. our blessings and, yeah. and to be content with what I have. Mm-hmm. It is a an battle every day to yeah. strive for that contentment. But that, that feels like a part of my purpose in right. life is to center and to be able to be like Mary and just be in the presence of God. Yep. But it just feels countercultural. It is countercultural, and I, you know, I love animals. I love, love, oh, yeah. I love people. I really love animals. Animals are the best. People. They're the best. And yeah. so this morning, you know, I'm, I'm brushing one of our great Pyrenees, and you know, the the love in her eyes to me is just like you just get lost. Mm-hmm. Like, oh my gosh, I just want to stay here all day and just rub your belly. And I think how much God appreciates when we give. This is going to sound really, you know, corny, but. I know my dog loves me under unconditionally, mm-hmm. and I think how much God loves me and just wants me to spend time, mm-hmm. just wants me to show, like, hey, I know you're there, and, I, you know, I acknowledge, I appreciate, I want to spend time with you. And so I see God 
all over and find meaning in nature and in creation and in animals because as we were talking yesterday in the lunchroom that that dog's going to give you unconditional love no matter what Mm. Uh, expects nothing but you know a belly rub and and food in the bowl and water in the dish so I know my my partner says that my dog looks at me like I am the sun and the moon yes. and the stars. Yes. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mama hung the moon. Absolutely. And she can do no wrong. That's exactly right. <laughs> and that's a good feeling. That's And I yeah. think God, creator God, you know, loves it when we kind of turn back and say, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I acknowledge. I accept. I, you know, I, I praise you because... Um, you you care for and love and created me. Mm. Well, we've talked a lot about some of the external pressures and and how our culture maybe takes us down the wrong path when it comes to finding purpose. Um, how do you think people can discern their authentic purpose amidst all of these external? influences that we're surrounded by how do we know that we've 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 found it yeah and again i would go back to i don't know that we have one purpose no. throughout the span of our life i think our kind of purpose can, can shift if it's you know right you stop working to take care of your children uh, that season of life or older parents or yourself mm-hmm. because maybe you are you know having struggles or issues and you have to back away from other things for self-care. I believe that you know, it's life is seasons and um, for such a time as this, you know, we, we can step up and just like, um, you know, Esther was called for such a time. I believe that there are, there are time periods in our lives and we're, we're right now, this is my purpose. This is what's giving me meaning, taking care of my mother with dementia or my child who has special needs or is mm-hmm. ill or whatever. I mean, you can go on and on and on or a neighbor or a friend. I, I believe that our purpose is to ourselves, but it's also beyond ourselves. Yeah. Well, it makes me think of like sometimes um, maybe if we just sit down and make a list of the things that um, bring us joy, mm. like the simple things. Because, you know, I was I was reading an article on psychology today. Well, not an article, actually a study uh, on the psychology of purpose. Mm. And one of the things that it talked about, it, it talked about finding purpose in religion, the importance of having purpose. And one of the things it said is people who don't have purpose are more prone to anxiety, to depression, to isolation, yes. uh, loneliness, you know, all of that. And I was just like, man, that's a lot. But then it, it said, you know, purpose doesn't have to be something big. Right. And it made me think about like, um, people with pets live longer yes. because taking care of that little animal mm-hmm. gives you a sense of purpose. Absolutely. And it's one of those things that it's yes. outside of yourself. It's right. taking the attention and the focus outside of yourself to this precious little creature that depends on you. Absolutely. And, um, Oh, maybe that's why people become parents, but that's why I become a pet parent. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, and there's there's all kinds of studies to your point about that. It's kind of like hope. If you live without hope, you know, your life expectancy or singing in a choir, there's something about being in a group that's higher. It's beyond yourself. Mm. So connecting, tapping into the divine, it's beyond ourselves. We take the focus off of our navel and mm. realize we're a part of a bigger picture a bigger plan and so when an animal's dependent on us or when we're a part of a team or a group there's camaraderie and you have your purpose you function in that you know small group or that entity and it it can give purpose and meaning have you been able to help people find that sense of meaning and that sense of purpose are there any specific stories that you can think of well, I, I thought about that question um, through my ministry. I think, you know, a, a lot of times it's the it's the big things that happen that kind of send us on a new um, 
in a new path on a new path or a new um, journey. And I think specifically of those who have experienced loss, when something kind of cataclysmic happens, and I can remember, you know, lots of of families who who lose a loved one, and because of that loss, for instance, someone's son dies of um, cancer. And they become very active in groups to support childhood cancer Mm -hmm. and really make a difference. Or someone all of a sudden sees a child, you know, neglected or an unwanted pregnancy and they adopt a child. Um, And I've seen that happen in several churches where someone, there's an unexpected pregnancy and a a church family adopts. Their whole life is forever changed Mm -hmm. because of a decision. So I think that sometimes out of brokenness, out of despair, out of heartbreak, People can find purpose and I'm going to do something to help make this better. Mm. And I've seen people's lives transformed. Their purpose blooms or comes alive because they're like, whoa, my grandparents that raise, you know, (laughs) grandchildren, they didn't know they were going to be 70 and raising a teenager. But I've seen it over and over and over. God gives you the strength and equips you to do something big and bold that you didn't see coming or you wouldn't have ever planned or scripted, but God meets you where you are and gives you a renewed sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that makes perfect sense. I can think of, you know, one of my friends who, um, her brother died by suicide Obvious. I mean, it was just de- devastating, devastating, and and she became um, passionate about uh, volunteering with groups that either raised money for or brought awareness to suicide prevention, and that has led her into now she works for an organization who provides. Um, outpatient support for people who are uh, having suicidal ideation Mm -hmm. or, you know, need to be put on a health program. And I'm just like, wow, for all of the, I mean, it just, an absolute tragedy that I would never, ever, I wish it hadn't happened. I would, I would never wish that on any, anybody, but like, We see it all the time in ministry. There's an impetus because someone you know or love, something has has touched your life and you want to try to help others either avoid that or walk beside someone who's who's experienced something similarly. Yeah. I mean, it's really amazing to see how things unfold and... Um, it makes me excited to think about what are my next 10 years Mm -hmm. gonna look like? Because I'm not I'm not a person who has a 10 year plan. I kind of take what life throws at me. Mm -hmm. And when I hear stories from people who are in their 60s and their 70s and their 80s, and they're like, oh, and they have these amazing (laughs) stories of all of these different things that they've done in their career and these weird odd jobs that they've had and Mm -hmm. you know, ended up in a different country and all of these things, I'm like wow, I wonder what my story is going to be when I'm 70 or 80 that I'll be able to tell people of like, oh yeah, it sounds, and, but it feels like it's so slowly unfolding. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where like the tension and anxiety of like, I got to find my purpose, but it's happening. It's it's already happening. (laughs) You know, one of those cliches that used to be really popular, I haven't heard it in a long time, but you know, if you want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's, there's some responsibility. Hey, I want to be a good steward of my time and my passions and my resources. And so I think it's important to have some plans and some goals. However, as I've gotten older and in ministry, I see that we have to be nimble. We have to be willing to pivot. We have to go, oh, I thought I was going here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, just a few degrees of um, of adjustment can take you into a, a, a totally new direction and a new destination. Um, I think back, and this has been several years ago, um, Alyssa Gerber was born with, um, I think it was cerebral palsy, and Jim sings in the choir. And at Alyssa's funeral, 
uh, and she died as a, as a young woman, uh, was always in a wheelchair. And at her funeral was the most beautiful story, uh, and it was printed in the bulletin. And Sarah Gerber, her mother, said, you know, um, this poem meant so much to them. They knew they were going to have a baby, and you have ex- expectations of, of what that child will be, and you know, and their expectations changed. And so all of a sudden, you know, here they thought they were going down this path, they chose another. But and I got chills. God was with them, and their journey was beautiful. And their journey with Alyssa, who had so many physical challenges, it was just a distant, different destination. It wasn't a worse destination. It was a beautiful place. Their love and their care of her and her love of them. It just wasn't what they would have ever planned or scripted or imagined. But God was with them, and it was a beautiful, holy life that they got to experience with her. And I think about that sometimes when I'm making my plans and my dreams and my hope. Yeah, this is what I anticipate, but sometimes you end up in a different city, a different country, (laughs) sometimes on a different planet, and you're like, I never would have guessed 10 years ago this is where I would be. This is what I would be doing with whom I'm doing it or whatever. But if God is with us, if God is directing and nurturing and we're tapped into our divine, to the divine, I believe, you know what? God will give us the the peace, the encouragement, whatever, to face whatever, um, wherever we find ourselves. So, so what encouragement or words of wisdom would you offer to someone who is currently struggling to find meaning and purpose in their life's journey? Uh, I really believe that to our, our point before with there's so many voices, social media, I think as great as it is, has done us no favors as far as like comparing and, oh, I need to do this. I need to look like this. I need to study this. I mean, my own son said, you know, mom, I think I'm going to add, you know, finance to my major. And I said, why? You hate math or you did in high school. He goes, well, because I want to make more money. Mm. And I said, buddy, you be you. Study things. I mean, I'm not saying something you hate. And as a result, you won't be good at. (laughs) Right. He's 19. But people have gotten in his ear and said, if you want to make more money, you need to do this. If you want to be successful. Oh, my gosh. Our entire millennial generation. If you want to be successful, you need a degree. Oh, if you want to be successful, you need to get your master's. Oh, right. Here we are with all of this student loan debt. And nobody cares. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Well, another young person told me she's going to the culinary school in New York. And she said, oh, yeah. Uh, so many people told me I was throwing my life away because her mom's a college professor and, you know, she's going to be a chef. And I was like, I think that's the coolest thing ever. She mm-hmm. goes, well, you're one of the few because so many people said, I'm, I'm like, oh my gosh, who, who are they that are telling you what you need to do with your life? And um, so anyway, to your point, I think that all of the comparison and you need to do this, you need to do that, and here's the script and you must follow it or whatever. Those who are trying to find meaning in your life and purpose be, just be, open up the scriptures, open up your mind, meditate, pray, be silent. The things we sometimes can't hear God speaking or nudging because we, we don't have the space for God to allow God to speak into our lives, to, to breathe hope or peace. What is it, God, that you want me to, you know, that prayer, I remember we had a, a, um, a sermon, a worship series. God, what do you want to do through me? That's what we prayed during one of our stewardship campaigns. God, what do you want to do for me, through me? That's a beautiful prayer. If you don't know your meaning or your purpose, God, what do you want to do through me? Why am I here? God will meet us at our point of need if we will allow to God to speak and to shut out the pundits and the the voices that are telling us what we should do, what we could do, why don't we do this, and you need to do this, to just be. And if that means camping, I know one time um, 
when I had a friend that um, it was death by suicide and I was really, 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 really struggling. And uh, the counsel I saw, it said, you need to go away by yourself. And I had three young kids at the time. You need to go away by yourself. So I just rented a cabin and, you know, thankfully up at our United Methodist camp at Lake Texoma, I was able to get a, a cabin. And for just two nights, I was by myself. Now, I'm a person that's very highly extroverted. I love people. I get energy from people. I don't do alone time so great. Um and it was life-giving because I took walks and I prayed and I was just like, God, help me, help me, help me, help me sort this out. What do I do with this? But I literally had to remove myself physically from my environment because I had nothing to give. I could not on my own kind of get where my headspace where I knew I needed to be. And God met me there. And I think that's, you know, to my point, sometimes when we're really at our lowest or there's a cataclysmic or something that's just, whoa, didn't see it coming. I'm not saying God causes those things to to bring us closer to God, but when we're really earnestly seeking, uh, God will meet us there and can help to reveal some of these things. So I would encourage somebody, be still, be quiet, get away, take a walk, pray read scripture. I mean, all those things. Um, and, and allow yourself to be at the point where you can even hear and experience the voice of God. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, Karen. I really appreciate your insight. And uh, I'm feeling better about purpose. <laughs> <laughs> the Life Plus God podcast is hosted, written, and produced by me, Alyssa Robinson, and sponsored by Treach Memorial United Methodist Church in Flower Mound, Texas. Check out Treach online at tmumc.org or in person to see if this church is a right fit for you and your family. We'd love for you to visit us soon. And if you like the podcast, don't forget to subscribe and rate us on your podcast platform to help other people find our content. Join us next week and let's keep growing in relationship with Christ together.